In this activity, we're going to learn about sets. Now, a set is simply a collection of things, and it can be a collection of a variety of things. So it might be numbers, right? So here's a set of three numbers. Uh, it might be, you know, people, John and Carol and Sam and Mary. So a group of Really, this is a group of first names, right? So that's a set of first names. It might be a combination. So it might have an eight and a Mary and a letter and a, I don't know, a fruit. So it can be, it can be, they don't have to be the same type. So sets can be a variety of things. Some interesting things about sets that we're gonna to wanna to pay attention to. And that is that they can be in different orders. So this set that we have above is actually equal to this set because they contain the same elements. Uh, they're just in a different order. So in sets, order doesn't matter. Like, so that it, those two are equivalent sets. Uh, another thing that's interesting is duplicates don't matter. So these two sets are equivalent, even though this one, it has four elements, but it has only three distinct elements. And so the fact that there's two fours doesn't make any difference. So duplicates don't matter, and they're still equivalent with or without the duplicates. So these are interesting things about sets. We can do, you can have a set uh, that follows a particular pattern. And then, and then you can just use dot, dot, dots to say, and the pattern continues, right? Let me give you an example of that. So here, if we have, let's say it's 4, 8, 12, 16. Notice that this pattern is, these are multiples of 4, right? And once you've established a pattern, then you can use dot, dot, dot to indicate that pattern repeats. And then, and it could just continue to repeat, and that means it would be an infinite set, that it would be multiples of four, in fact, positive multiples of four, that goes indefinite, and that's an infinite set. Or it could have an, an ending spot as well. So we could say there's the multiples of four from four to 400. So uh, interesting, thing about sets to be able to use those three dots to be able to indicate that a pattern repeats and the idea that you can have a finite set or an infinite set. Some other interesting things is we like to identify about sets and that is uh, how many elements there are. That's called cardinality, cardinality and it's represented by the, okay, the pipe so we could say here, what's the cardinality of this set? And we could say, well, the cardinality of that set is equal to three because there are three distinct elements. But we don't normally write it like that. Um, what we do is we say, hey, let's name this set A and say that that set A equals that. And then we don't have to repeat it. And then we can say things about A. So we define A here. We specify what set A represents. And then we can simply use A wherever we're talking about that set. So then we can say the cardinality of A equals three. And remember how we talked about duplicates, right? So now if we have a duplicate here, so we have eight, the cardinality of A is still three because it's the number of distinct elements. But if we have different elements, so nine and seven, then the cardinality of A would be five because there's five distinct elements. And uh, in the case of an infinite set, we can't count the cardinality, right? By definition, uh, infinite is uncountable. So you don't have a cardinality of an infinite set. There's other things that we can do with sets. Uh, we can talk about being an element of. So we can say that eight is an element of, and now we get to learn some new symbols that we use for that. So let's go and find our special characters math. And what we use for an element of is this. And so we say eight is an element, that kind of round E, maybe capital E, but that's eight is an element 
of the set, right? And we can say eight is an element of this set, or we can say eight is an element of A. We can also say not an element. For example, three is not an element of it. So again, if I insert, then this is just that same character, but with a line through it. And three is not an element of A. So we can use these symbols to indicate an element of or not an element of. Another, a special set that we often use is what's called the empty set. So let's look at that for a minute. That also has a special character. So if we look at the special character for empty set, it's a zero with a line through it. That's one way to identify the empty set. Another way is to do it like that, just open curly braces with nothing between them. So uh, either way, one of these represent the empty set. And if we talk about the cardinality of the empty set, so let me write that, the cardinality of the empty set is actually equal to zero. The empty set has no elements, so its cardinality is zero.